Hello scholars, welcome back, Mr. Hinkle here. Today I want to talk about a special type of plate tectonics called hot spot volcanism. So today's objective is to describe hot spot volcanism through understanding the mechanism and where they occur on Earth's surface. So a hot spot is an area in Earth's crust that is fed by a mantle plume that is stationary. It does not move. So let's go like this. We've got crust. And underneath the crust is what? The mantle. And underneath the mantle is what? The core. Now, within the mantle, the mantle's primary job is to transfer heat that drives the movement of Earth's crust. Certain areas, the crust will thin. Mm, let's do it like this. Creating a volcano. So this is a mantle plume. And the volcano that is created above the mantle plume is a hot spot. Now, hotspots are volcanoes that are not associated with plate tectonics. All other volcanoes are going to be, but sometimes they're not. And the mantle plume remains stationary while the overriding plate moves across the surface of the Earth. This is the concept of plate tectonics. The surface of the Earth is covered by large, rigid bodies of rock that move relative to one another, and where they meet, is a plate tectonic boundary. The product of plate tectonic boundaries are earthquakes and volcanoes and mountains and ocean basins, but we have this unique opportunity on our Earth where volcanoes form away from tectonic boundaries. We find hotspots all over the world, and we're going to do a case study on two specific ones, Hawaii and Yellowstone. But the global distribution of hotspots shows us that this is a relatively common feature because Earth's subsurface has a lot of heat to move. <clears throat> Hawaii, this is Mount Kilauea. It erupts. If you live on Hawaii, if you live on the side of Mount Kilauea, you know this viscerally because this is an active volcano. Now, all of the Hawaiian islands are volcanic islands, but the only volcano that is active and erupting is the big island of Hawaii where Mount Kilauea and Mauna Loa are currently at. Here are the Hawaiian islands. Here's the Hawaiian seamount chain, and here's the emperor seamount chain. Now, the Hawaiian hotspot. This is similar to what I drew here, except for a little bit better description. The mantle plume does not move. The Pacific plate is moving. This is another one of our supporting lines of evidence that help uh, give us confidence in the theory of plate tectonics. Through the process of radiometric age dating, we can put an absolute date, we can put an amount of years on different rocks. Kilauea, Mauna Loa, they're erupting currently. Some of the rocks further to the northwest are about 0.7 million years. We have Maui, which is around 1.3 million years old. Molokai, 1.8. Oahu, 3.4. Kauai, 4.9. When we look at the age from uh, Mount Kilauea, all the way through the Emperor Seamount chain, each volcanic island is progressively older to about 80 million years. There's this really interesting bend here because the direction of the plate shifted. The plate was moving in this direction, so it was moving this. This got formed to here, so dee 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 dee, and then it started to move this way, do, 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 do. and there we have the Emperor Seamount chain. How cool is that? 
We know this is a volcano. It erupts. Not only that, but we can see all of these. The seamounts are now underwater because of erosion, but we can research these islands and see a progressively older age from 0 to 80 million years, indicating that the Pacific plate has been moving and is continuing to move. So not only does Hawaii provide evidence for a hotspot, Yellowstone. Yellowstone's been talked about as the super volcano that could blow its top at any point, and it's very geologically active. That's why it's so beautiful. Because the last volcanic eruption in Yellowstone created a caldera. There's cracks underneath of it that water seeps into. That water is superheated by the mantle and then erupts at the surface full of minerals, which create its beautiful colors and also giving off heat in the form of steam and geysers. So the last time Yellowstone erupted was 631,000 years ago. But there is deposits of volcanic eruptions that trace back 16 million years. Again, we can trace the movement of the plate tectonic of the tectonic plate in this direction. 16 million years ago, these lava deposits sat directly above the hot spot, but then the hot spot continued to move. <clears throat> the mantle, the mantle plume, the volcano. So while yes, uh, Yellowstone could erupt, it could erupt tomorrow, it could erupt next year. It could also be another 400,000 years when it erupts, and uh, I wouldn't worry. I don't think I'm going to live to be 400,000 years old. But predicting volcanoes and earthquakes is a very, very young science, which is a nice way of saying we can't really predict when a volcanic eruption of this magnitude or an earthquake is going to occur. We do not have that technology yet. But we do understand the processes that are acting on Earth's surface plate tectonics, and hotspot volcanism. So hotspots are very important to Earth. They are the only type of volcanoes not associated with plate tectonic boundaries, distributed across the globe, and important for our understanding for how Earth's internal processes are working and creating landforms on Earth's surface. So thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.